Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. Hello and welcome to episode 39 of WoW Pet Battle Crew, where small creatures fight to the death for our amusement. I'm your host, Josh Augustine, and it's time for another power leveling episode. It's been almost a year since we last talked about how to power level your pets uh, using the existing tamers out in Pandaria, and I say that it is time that we add a few more of those big XP challenges to our daily farm list. So if you just watched the live stream that I did, you know that we're going to be talking about the elemental spirits in Pandaria today. Um, and if you also watched the live stream, you saw how horribly unlucky I got, and I hope you have better luck. I'm still frustrated from it. I had to restart the guide three times. Uh, because of how poorly it went, which was uh, really unfortunate. Where, like, they have a 25% chance to sleep, and they do it three times in a row. And then I missed all my big abilities three times in a row. Uh, so that was really unfortunate. But we're here. Whew, we're calm. I just need to take a deep breath. Breathe in the Zen of Pandaria. Zen of Pandaria. It's okay that the Tamers were broken today. I'm a happy person. I'm a whole pet battler. Um, Alright, so I know these tamers, they came out a while ago, right? They came out several patches ago. But I think that they're still super valuable to run right now, and I think a strategy for them is still really valuable. There are a lot of new tamers joining the fold during this pre-expansion downtime when there's not a lot to do else in-game. And it's one thing to beat these tamers, right? We all beat these tamers back in the day because we had a quest to do it. Um, but it's a whole nother thing to beat them using only two pets, um, so that you can power level a third pet. And that's our goal this this week. And this is where I think the guide is still really valuable. So whether you're just starting to get into pet battles and you want to figure out how to beat them on their own, this, this guide will help you get there. Or if you just want to try and power level a ton of pets before the next expansion, um, this is the way to do it. So this week, all we're, we're going to do all four Pandarian uh, Elemental Spirit Tamers in under 15 minutes, and all the while leveling a pet from 18 to 25. So before we get into strats, let's talk about each individual one. Uh, there's the Whispering Pandaren Spirit, that's the Air ele Elemental way out in Jade Forest. Uh, the Thundering Pandaren Spirit, that's the Earth Elemental, who's shaped like a cow, he's in the Valley of the Four Winds. There's the Burning Pandaren Spirit, that's the Fire Elemental out in Taolong Steps. And of course, the Flowing Pandaren Spirit, the Water Elemental. He's on the small island on the coast of Dreadwaste. Uh, the live stream video that'll be up on the blog, GameDiplomat.com, will walk you through how to find all of them. Uh, but these are elite tamer battles, right? Somewhere in between the regular Pandaria tamers like Aki the Chosen and the Beasts of Fable. Not quite as hard as those. It's still just three pets that all have strong abilities and high stats. Uh, but there's no crazy buffs like the Celestial Tournament pets get where all damage they take is reduced by 50%. None of that here. So this is a great thing to grind because you have a chance to also earn all of the elemental spirits as pets. Every time you do the daily to defeat them, you get a bag. And that bag can have any of the pets in it, which is uh, great. And they're actually pretty solid pets. The the air, or the water elemental spirit is actually key to a lot of the Beasts of Fable strategies that we've done before. All right, so the first fight is against the Whispering Pandaren spirit. This is where I usually start my cycle, where I go through all four. Start here, it's closest to, the net, uh, to where I start, all that stuff. Uh, and they have three pets. Dusty, who's a standard moth. Whispertail, a dragonkin bird type pet, uh, and, and the Pandaren Air Spirit, which is basically a bird with a heel. So the counter pets you want here, dragonkins that deal magic damage are the perfect counter. Um, because dragonkin take less damage from flying, and magic damage deals more damage to flying. Um, that puts Chrominius from our double damage team from way back when, and Nexus Welpling from our combo team just last episode at the top of our list. And that's another thing we're trying to do with this guide, is we're trying to use pets that we've used in our previous teams, right? Because I think that just makes it more valuable and useful for us as a community of people that listen to the show and have tried a lot of the same teams together. Hopefully this is good. So if you don't have any of those pets, that's okay. Any dragonkin pet will do pretty good, because it's going to take less damage from all of the enemy team. Uh, but the best alternatives also deal heavy damage, um, in magic, preferably, because that'll help take care of that first pet. Like uh, the Celestial Dragon, Emerald Proto-Whelp, or the Emerald Whelpling, Little Terragosa, 
uh, Nether Fire Dragon, Sprite Darter Hatchling, Nether Whelp. All of these are good alternatives. And I'm going to have links to all of these pets in the show notes as well. So don't worry about r- trying to write this down as you listen. Just try and think of one if you have it in your roster. Like, oh, okay, I have the e- Emerald Proto Whelp. I'll remember that one. Um, and actually, son, fun side note, the Emerald Proto Whelp or Emerald Whelpling can both almost solo this entire team. But it takes forever. It can stack up defensive and heals. And because it takes less damage, you basically take no damage. But you're dealing, like, tiny amounts of damage every single turn. (laughs) One Wowhead comment said it took him 52 turns to beat it. But he did solo it. So, I mean, if you get stuck in a rut, if you have terrible luck like I did in the live stream today, um, then maybe this is the way to go. It's a good fallback plan because you know you basically can't lose with that pet. Um, But with our team, the only enemy ability that can really throw a kink in our plan is Dusty's Cocoon which blocks one attack. We all know that moth ability, right? So you need to make sure that you time your big attacks around that. He always uses it on turn two, and then every time it's off cooldown after that. Uh, You can spam Arcane Explosion on your first pet, which is what I'd highly recommend. Even if you don't have Chrominius, get a pet with Arcane Explosion to spam Arcane Explosion constantly. Um, It avoids the Cocoon's impact, right? Because it's still hitting the back line. And it brings all three enemy pets to half health. Uh, before it dies, essentially. Whisper Tail, after that, spends two turns setting up debuffs before throwing down heavy damage. So that means you want to take him out quickly, because once he sets down those debuffs and starts going to town, it's going to tear your face apart. <laughs> so in general, wait until the Pandaren Air Spirit is on the board uh, to bring in your leveling pet, right? You you can time it with his heal. You know he's going to cast his heal every time that the buff wears off. So you can just plan ahead of time. You know when he's going to cast the heal, swap in your leveling pet. There you go. Uh, If you don't run into terrible luck (laughs) like I did, this fight is pretty straightforward. After that is the Thundering Pandaren Spirit. This is the one that looks like a cow and it's super close to the Horde uh, spawn point or whatever in Valley of the Four Winds. Uh, The pet's there. Pandaren Earth Spirit, obviously. That's a CC heavy elemental. He does a ton of stuns. Uh, Sludgy, a DPS ooze, kind of like the disgusting oozling. And then Darnak the Tunneler, an epic name for a not very epic pet. It's kind of an odd hybrid of rabbit and stone spider. It does burrowing, but then it also does the charge where it damages you for a ton, but also hurts himself. So counter pets. We need an evasive critter uh, to take down that Pandar and Earth Spirit, because otherwise his stuns just wreck your day. Um, And then you also need a a steady, heavy-hitting mechanical pet just to take out Darnak the Tunneler and try and take care of that ooze. I would probably go with the Silkbead Snail, or another snail of that type, and then also Little XT, who was from our AoE team, and is also one of my favorite pets for PvE, because the damage he puts out is just insane. So if if you don't have either of those, basically any critter with aquatic attacks is going to be good to take down the Pandaren Earth Spirit, so it'll avoid all the stuns, and it will deal bonus damage. So that's snails, turtles, and crickets are all going to be good counters there. But also, any fast rabbit has to have over 300 speed, which is a high speed, right? Uh, The Dark Moon Rabbit, or maybe the Tulai Hare from our Dodge team, uh, will work tremendously as well here. Um, A lot of people tried swapping in the Fluxfire Feline, or the Deweaponized Mechanical Companion, and even the Tranquil Mechanical Yeti, who was from our very first team on this show, are all decent kind of alternatives to Little XT. I think Little XT is by far and away the best one, uh, but those are decent alternatives. And if you even threw out uh, the mechanical Pandaren Draggling as a great counter to Sludgy, if he's giving you problems in particular. He wasn't too bad. He deals a ton of damage. Um, but with little XT, you're damaging him and the pet behind him. So it's okay if he's dishing out damage because you're killing two of their pets at once. So who cares at that point? All right, now here's the secret. Secret is you need to start with your leveling pet. The Earth Spirit always uses his no damage stun on the very first turn. That lets you get your pet in there. Uh, it gets combat credit, it gets stunned, that's okay, you're going to swap it out anyways, and it has zero risk of dying. He never not uses the stun on first, on turn one. At least in all the, I haven't done it hundreds of times, but the dozens of times that I've done this fight, he's never not stunned on turn one. So, and after that, it's basically just a matter of using evasion abilities, right? And we've done that on enough teams so far, we've, we've used rabbits, we've used dragons, we've used birds, they all have abilities that you know avoid for one turn you just need to look at their ability set and then know okay this is coming up off cooldown their big burst damage i'm gonna avoid it pretty simple um and then you just grind through their hp 
And the third one, this one is the easiest one, the Burning Pandaren Spirit. This is another one that is guaranteed for your pet to get, uh, if you play it right, your pet, your leveling pet will always get XP and never take damage. Um, so if you're really trying to level a level 1 pet in Pandaria, Burning Pandaren Spirit and Thundering Pandaren Spirit, I think, are the places to go. So the three pets here are pretty straightforward. Crimson, he's a flight-focused dragonkin. Flowey, who is a typical mosquito, which is somehow associated with a fire elemental. I mean, I guess it's little butt glow thing is orange, so that's kind of fiery. So he's with the Burning Pandaren Spirit. And finally, the Pandaren Fire Spirit, who is basically fire damage and heals. That's it. So the counter pets... Anubiseth Idol, and pretty much anything else you want. The second slot doesn't even matter. <laughs> Sandstorm and Passive Healing lets the Anubiseth Idol pretty much solo the entire team, which is fantastic. So really any pet with Sandstorm will work just fine on this team. Um, although Karaji Guardling, the one you get during the summertime down in Solithus, uh, in front of the gates of Ankara, uh, he's the ideal pick since he has the exact same synergy as the Anubiseth Idol. He has Sandstorm, and the humanoid ability um, that heals him every turn. But if you don't have any Sandstorm pets, first of all, you must be a new pet tamer because Sandstorm and Anubiseth Idol, everyone was running about six months ago. Um, so if you haven't gotten one by now, please do yourself a favor, go out and get one. Sandstorm is a great ability, has a ton of uses in PvE and PvP. Um, but if you don't have them, any snail, I think, can decently finish off the final pet. They're going to do just fine. Uh, so you have two jobs in this fight. Keep Sandstorm up at all times, and use Deflection to stop big attacks. That's the secret. Thankfully, there are only two big attacks <laughs> in the entire roster. Crimson, the first pet, does Lift Off, and the Pandaren Fire Spirit, the second pet, does Conflagrate. Um, so you can swap in your leveling pet on any turn. The Glowy, the Mosquito, the final pet is out. As long as Sandstorm is up, because none of his abilities do damage while Sandstorm is up, because they deal damage in such small chunks that Sandstorm just wipes them out. Like, maybe it'll, and, and so, maybe in some certain scenarios, you'll deal, like, 30 damage, right? Maybe the ones that scale off of health and that sort of stuff, but other than that, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty abysmal as damage with Sandstorm up, so just make sure you bring in your pet while Sandstorm is up and Glowy is the pet out. As long as you do that, your pet can't die, it's gonna get XP, it's gonna be awesome. Um, yeah, this is the easiest fight by far. Uh, if you're if you're having trouble with all of them, get a Nubaseth Idol. You can farm for him or buy him off the auction house, and just go down here and beat up on the <laughs> Burning Pandaren Spirit every day, and you'll just get a bunch of free XP. All right, the last one, Flowing Pandaren Spirit. This is uh, the watery one. You got three pets. Up first, Marley, who's fish with a ton of burst damage. The Pandaren Water Spirit. Elemental with a ton of burst damage, <laughs> and Tiptoe, who's just kind of a typical water strider. The little kind of crickety things that run on the water. Um, I don't know if they have a real life equivalent or what those classify as. They're some sort of insect. Uh, but counter pet, uh, call up Eleanor, our guest from a few weeks ago, and bring all the moths with you, because <laughs> moths are the perfect counter. You don't need anything but moths. I mean, really, any decent flying or beast pet will do okay here. Um, but it's going to do even better if it has the ability to dodge attacks for a turn. Like Liftoff, uh, the Windrider Cub, I think is an ideal pet. Because it's a beast with flying attacks. But that combination is disturbingly rare. And Windrider Cub is also disturbingly rare. Because you have to buy a plushie in real life to get a code to redeem it in-game. It's also one of the pets that I want the most that I've never gotten. Um... Someday, I'm going to buy that plushie or get it for Christmas or something. Maybe I can convince my wife to get it for me for Christmas. Anyways, um, once again, though, here, snails are apparently the elemental's nemesis because snails make a great counter for the elemental spirit. Um, it's critter. It takes less damage from elemental, and it deals aquatic damage, deals bonus damage against elemental. So if you're having trouble closing it out against the Pandaren water spirit, try swapping in a snail. Um, and let's look at the secret. You're noticing a trend, right? Because Coon Strike will be used to avoid the burst damage. <laughs> Other than that, use Moth Dust every time it's up. That's the one. Deals heavy damage, 25% chance to sleep. Every time it's off cooldown, you use it. Hope for some crits or sleep effects. If either of those happen, you're going to win easily. Um, but if you get a, a string of bad luck, you know, you may have a little problem. But without that, you should have no problem taking them out. Um, the, here again, start with your leveling pet. 
the very first time he just casts a group debuff, right? He casts Whirlpool, which isn't going to stick to your pet. It's going to stick to whatever pet is out front. So it's a safe turn one. Bring out your pet. Free XP. Huzzah. So there you go. I try to keep the guide pretty quick because... It's all going to be on the show notes as well, gamediplomat.com. You can go there. I'll have a video for how I did it, along with links to all the pets and all that sort of stuff. More intense theory crafting there. Hopefully, uh, this guide helps you out. If you have other pets you use for these fights, I'd love to hear about it. You should let us know in the comments on the blog or in the Google Plus community. Share your thoughts. Let us know so everyone else can swap strategies and kind of maybe if I'm not using the best combo, maybe you have a better combo. Let's talk about it so other people can uh, use your great idea. Uh, let's jump into the question. This week's question comes from the awesome people in our Google Plus community, specifically Devin Dawson. And he asks, um, well, as I'm getting closer to the Celestial Tournament, do you have advice on the types of pets to make sure are among your first 15 to start the tournament? I apologize if you covered this in an earlier show. I don't think we've ever talked in general, actually, about Celestial Tournament pets and just kind of the basics of kind of what types of pets you want. So this is a great question, I think, that actually the community will have some really good answers for. So if you guys have answers, please share it with, in the Google Plus community with Devin. Uh, the post is up there. It'll still be pretty fresh when you jump there. Um, but Arvid Cedarval, um actually gave a few recommendations already. Um, he lists exactly which pets he uses for each fight, uh, especially the Celestial uh, Spirits. Or what are they called? Souls? I forget. Whatever the fancy, the fancy, the fancy ones that are gods of Pandaria, of animals of some kind, spirit animals. Um, but he lists a bunch. I think the key is kind of picking a few of the core pets, right? Like Anubis Seth Idol, we've mentioned a couple times, just has awesome synergy that's going to be useful in many fights. Um, it's humanoid that gains health that reduces all damage taken. It's a solid combo. You're going to want to level that pet up. Um, Kunlai Runt is mentioned here by Arvid as well. I think that's another kind of universal pet. It has a super reliable combo that deals heavy damage and stuns, and stun is really useful. Um, Tranquil Mechanical Yeti and Clockwork Gnome, again, are a, a combo that I think you want to level. Uh, just because you really can't get better sustained mechanical damage than those two right there. Uh, they will dish out more mechanical damage than any other combo, as far as I know, in the game. Um, and that's just going to be really useful when you're facing any sort of very strong beast that takes a lot of damage from mechanical pets. Um, he also lists the Unborn Valkyr and Chrominius in here in his teams. And I think both those pets are probably really strong pets. Um, Unborn Valkyr, as we've talked about before, has dominated PvP for months now. And she's just now starting to fall out of favor because people know how to counter her. But AI in the Celestial Tournament doesn't know how to counter her, so her combo is still really strong. And Chrominius is just another one of those pets that has a great combo. He applies a debuff that doubles the damage the enemy pet takes, and then he has a nuke that deals 740 damage. <laughs> which is just, uh, it's a great combo right there. So I think those are some really good starters there. Those are all from Arvid. Uh, I really appreciate him giving his, his suggestions there, and I just kind of picked out my favorites out of the ones that he recommended. Uh, so I think th that's a really good place to start building your list of 15. Obviously, that's not 15. I'm sure you already have some pets that you like that are just fun. Uh, but if you guys have suggestions for uh, Devin as well, please post it in the show notes or in the Google Plus community so we can check it out. All right. And after the question comes the combo. Daniel Nordstrom writes in and says, I've been using my treasure goblin with wild magic and magic sword. So this is another kind of <laughs> hard to recommend combo just because you only get this pet if you bought the special edition or at least maybe pre-ordered uh, the Diablo 3 expansion, right? It's one another one of these special pets, but man, this pet looks cool. It looks like a tiny little goblin with like a giant sack of loot on its back and he has a ton of cool animations when he dies like loot flies out from him like it does in Diablo. But let's look at the combo, right? Wild magic we've seen before. That's the one that adds 70 damage to every attack against the target. And then Magic Sword summons a Magic Blade to deal 280 magic damage to the enemy. Critical Strike Chance is increased by an additional 100%, which means you're basically guaranteed to crit. Which this combo is interesting, and I never really would have thought about it, because you're also critting the wild magic damage. So you're actually getting one and a half times, so that's adding basically 105 to every turn. And you're dealing, let's see, what's... 280 plus 
140. You're dealing like 400. Uh, this is like 500 damage a turn. Um, that's pretty insane. It is a 75% hit chance on Magic Sword. Uh, but you can spam it for four turns in a row, before or five turns, before Wild Magic wears off. So that is 250,000 damage, <laughs> which is insane over the course of six turns. Uh, so that is, uh, that's a really cool combo. Uh, I will also toss on there, Daniel didn't explicitly mention this, but uh, Treasure Goblin also has Portal, which is a really interesting ability. The user jumps through a magical portal, portal avoiding the opponent's attack. The unit then swaps automatically with your highest health pet. So it's kind of like Feign Death, but it has a lot cooler animation, <laughs> right? So when you use it, it's not, oh, my pet's dying, and now he's somehow sliding to the background. This is like, what? Sweet portal teleportation. It looks awesome. Um, so yeah, so if you happened to get this, or I don't know if it's too late. I'll have to check if it's too late to still get this pet, because it is a really cool pet. And hey... The Diablo 3 expansion is actually really awesome. If you haven't played Diablo uh, since it came out, or if you kind of avoided Diablo after the initial release, uh, they've changed a lot and they really improved a ton of systems within the game that make it a lot more fun. So you should get in there and try it out. And hey, if we're friends on Battle.net, as many of us are, uh, you should uh, we should team up in there, because I've been leveling a Crusader, which is the new class, and it's awesome. All right, let's do an iTunes review. Spud. 31 2001 says love the shows loving all your shows i listen to them as they as soon as they come out your knowledge about the pets is amazing also love trying to make pet teams to try out keep it going smiley face so this guy uh spud 31 2001 i don't actually know if it's a guy maybe it's a gal uh this person is from uk i finally figured out how to find itunes reviews in other regions so if you've left an itunes review that i haven't read on the show in other regions other than north america which is what my itunes defaults to let me know so i can track it down and find it uh but this is awesome thank you for the kind notes <laughs> uh i don't know if my knowledge of pets is amazing as i clearly just showed when answering <laughs> daniel's question or uh not daniel's question uh who sent it was devin's question um that i just shared a lot of information that Arvin Cedarval put out there. Um, and that's what I love about this show, actually. It's one of my favorite shows because of all of you guys. We're all sharing information. This isn't just me on high saying, do this, do this. I just kind of throw out an idea and then say, let's play with it. And then we all play with it and put together what we think. So uh, thank you to, to everyone listening for making me look good and making Spud31 think I'm a genius. So thanks for that. <laughs> uh, if you want to have your iTunes review read on the show, Put it out there. If it goes into the North America iTunes, I'll see it automatically. If you put it in another region, let me know so I can find it and make sure that I read it on the show. Uh, next week on Wild Pet Battle Crew, we're going to do the review for our uh, tanky blood team. Where, I don't know if you guys, if you haven't been playing with the Ruby Droplet, you are missing out. We've had so many people talking in the chat channel and in the, in the Google Plus community and just in general about how good the Ruby Droplet pet is. Um, everyone is on board with this pet. Uh, it's getting crazy expenses on on servers because a lot of people are trying to buy it right now. Uh, but if you can afford it or if you can afford the time to grind it, you need to get this pet. We'll talk more about it next week during the review. Death Adder Hatchling, though, uh, also pretty sweet. On Happy Hearthstone, we're running our first ever player tournament. Right now, actually. I think it closes later this week, uh, which I'm really excited about. We've been doing a, sh uh, a series on the show where it's deck battles, where you have to take on, you know, the best deck. And the same deck has been undefeated since October. So we're holding a player tournament that everyone can play in to decide who gets to come on the show from the community and face down this undefeated deck because somebody finally has to beat it. It's been there for too long, right? Uh, great. Good news for Dan for building a deck that has withstood like six challengers at this point. But we're now we're just bringing in the whole community. Let's find the best player who can build the best decks in the entire community of the podcast and then bring them on the show so they can take it down. Um, in theory, hopefully take it down. I want it to go down. I know Dan doesn't. So that tournament is going on right now and then we're going to have the winner on next week. Uh, onto the show to talk about that. I'm really excited about that. Also because I have no clue who's going to be on the show next week. It's whoever wins the tournament. We're doing it like morning show style where whoever gets kicked off American Idol just shows up on the morning show the next day or whatever. Uh, but now we're, we're bringing the winner on instead of the loser. So hooray. All right. So I'm going to go back to playing that sweet, sweet Ruby Droplet Death Adder Hatchling team. I hope you are as well. A reminder, 
Next show, we're going to be doing the review, which means I need your comments about these pets and about the team as a whole and what third wheels you're bringing on so I can share it in the review. If it comes in after the review, it's too late because I can't share it on the show. Um, I want more comments from you guys, so please try out either of the pets. Uh, even if you've faced against the Ruby Droplet or the Death Adder Hatchling, just let me know what you think of those pets. You can put it in Google Plus or in any of the posts on uh, GameDiplomat.com related to WoW Pet Battle Crew. I will find it. Um, there you go. If you want to join the community, go to Google Plus, search for WoW Pet Battle Crew. You can join us all talking there. And of course, GameDiplomat.com has all of the shows. Just click on Pet Battles. You can find all of our pet battling shows. And the nice thing about WoW Pet Battle Crew, I think, is that the shows are kind of timeless, right? The teams that were fun six months ago are still fun right now. So you can try any of those old teams if you're just getting into the show. Um... You can also email me directly. Let me know what you thought of the show, what you want to see added in the future, or if you have a question or a combo you would like to see featured in the future, please do, because I am out of combos. I am out of questions. I need some for next episode, or else the community section is going to be an awkward 20 minutes of silence that I will force you to listen to. Uh, you can email me directly, wowpetbattle.outlook.com, or on Twitter, a at jaugustine. Uh, good luck to everyone who's going to be trying out the team, and good luck to anyone who's in the Happy Hearthstone tournament. I know there's a few people to listen to both shows, so I hope uh, you're doing well. Uh, and for everyone else, thanks for tuning in to another episode of WoW Pet Battle Crew and Taming the World of Azeroth with me one turn at a time. Happy hunting, Tamers.